day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. God bless. Love you. Hey, everybody. I'm glad you're back and I hope you enjoyed the video. I know this is one is probably uh, more difficult than most videos I've done because we're trying to tackle uh, a tradition that we've put into the body of Christ concerning behaviors of people coming into the body of Christ or people that have been in the body of Christ, but let's really talk about the people that's coming into the body of Christ where we're tempted to sometimes try to pose rules and behaviors uh, that we consider acceptable right from the back or even after a certain period of time. If, if somebody has been going to the club, somebody has been drinking, uh, somebody has been cursing and <laughs> any other behavior that we consider a suspect, right? We, we need to understand that your disapproval, your uh, non-endorsement but condemnation is not going to change that person's behavior. What's going to change a new believer's behavior is to do what the Bible says, which is, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Teach them to seek the kingdom of God first. And all these other things should be added, right? That seek ye first the kingdom of God and then... And, 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 his righteousness will shall prevail in him as well as in you. Because, you know, we're not all that and, and a bag of potato chips ourselves. But we, we do have, and there's expectation for somebody that's more mature in, in Christ, more mature in, 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 in the word, that we may have a different expectation for them. You might not want somebody, you might not want your pastor to be hanging out in the club. You might not want your deacon hanging out in the club or, 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 or the choir hanging out in the club. You may not want that. But then again, it's still got to remember, it's their choice. You can endorse it or not endorse it. All you can do is keep them in prayer and just well as yourself. But if they want to go, they're going to go. We know that, right? So we're not trying to... to we need to at least talk about the people that come into the body of Christ more. I'm more interested in them more than anything else. I'm not interested in, in pastor so-and-so and deacon so-and-so or the people in the choir, the people in the ushers. If, 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 if the doctrine or the behavior of that ministry is to operate where people uh, live a godly level of living, meaning acceptable level of living that, that doesn't uh, support the works of the flesh. I understand. But for people coming in, let's let's work on them getting to know him. I mean, that's what we focus on 2020, which is Philippians 3.10, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering may conformable unto his death. The key to it is when a believer comes into the body of Christ, your job is to point toward knowing Jesus, not you. I don't care whether you hate sin. It doesn't matter whether you hate sin. It, what matters is that you love Jesus and you want that person to love Jesus. It matters that you know Jesus and you want to get that person to know Jesus. And because you want that person to know Jesus, you know that that person will start transforming and growing into the things of God and their behavior will be conforming toward the things in the will of God not your will we got to make sure people understand it's his will and only way people can live according to his will is to get to know him not based on doctors not based on rules not based on the fact that say well I can't I'm not with that I'm not there I don't want you to be there I want you to be in Christ and I want that person and you want to encourage that person to be in Christ. That is your role in the gospel. Bring somebody to the body of Christ. Get them to know him and the power of his resurrection because it's the power of the resurrection that will change somebody's behavior. Okay? Just understand, nobody's endorsing 
drinking or any other behavior, but we're saying is don't sit there and try to put and run somebody away because they do. Don't look at somebody and say they're not saved because they do. You sit there and say, is man, I just want you to understand Jesus loves you, I love you. And this and, and remember this. If and, and I think what the scripture said, be be not deceived, God is not mocked. For what several man soweth, that shall he also reap. If you want to talk about it, you just tell my man, watch what you're sowing. Watch what you plant in your life. Because there's a harvest that comes with the things we plant in our life. And I'm if I'm going to encourage somebody to do something different or their behavior, I'm encouraging them is to plant seeds that's going to give a good harvest. But don't show you. Act like you're sucking up on a lemon. Don't sit there and tell them they can't enjoy life. Tell them, say, you can enjoy life, but you don't have to plant seeds that are bad. Nobody have a problem with you going to the football game. And if you want to go to the club, I mean, if you want to go to the club, if that's where you are and that's where you feel you have, you make your enjoyment, then go ahead to the club. Why, we, why am I going to sit there and focus on little things like that when there's bigger things to concern ourselves with? For example, the if the person hasn't received Christ as a person, Lord and Savior, that's a big problem. Because the salvation comes through Christ. And we're sitting there trying to work on the things that are obvious and visible. Talking about, you know, club or somebody got a drink in their hands or somebody is dancing or somebody is, 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 is inappropriately dating somebody shouldn't be dating. But what about the other parts of this in the flesh? The parts that you can't see, the things that are going on in the people's minds. The things that's going in people's heart. And guess what? God looks at your heart. So you can sit there and focus on the outward appearance and activities of people. But God looks at the heart and he looks at your heart too. If you got hate, if you got unforgiveness, if you got all those type of things, you got murder in your heart. God is looking at that. That's why you want to sit there and no focus on the outward things focus on the inward of the heart of the spirit not for just them but for you too for me it's it's, it's understanding he loves me and we want to learn to love one another and i think if we learn to love one another then we start saying you know i i, I change my behavior because of love not because of rules and orders because they don't work but love works all the time all right so not endorsing not saying it's okay to do this or that but it's not my authority anyway to say whether somebody should go to the club it's not my authority anyway whether somebody drinks wine or liquor or beer it's not my authority whether they're sitting there doing some crazy stuff dating somebody they're not supposed to date with or hanging out with somebody they're not supposed to hate with that is not my authority that is not your authority it's not for you. It doesn't matter whether you endorse it or not. What does matter is that you love them and you pray for them and you encourage them to get to know Jesus. And if they get to know Jesus, don't think you got problems with and you see in their life, I guarantee you, Christ will work on it. He can do a better job than you. Amen. All right. I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, I'll see you later. God bless. Bye bye. A saint is not trying to find a way to sin, but a way out of sin. So therefore, they figure that if you if you do the party, you do the drinking, you you you're finding a way to sin, opposed to find a way out of sin. Now the problem I have though is, if if you're going to use that analogy, then I think that's why Islam decided to come up with the dress, you know, putting the ladies in those garments where they cover everything up and put a hand scarf over their head and over cover up everything except for the eyes so that adultery or the temptation of adultery won't start. And I think I agree with that. I, I think I can agree with that. I think that's what these I think that's where all that stuff came from, Chris. It's just they're trying to find a way to move further and further away from the actual committing of sin. Yeah, and that goes into, like I said, the, the, the starting the convents, monasteries, all that stuff. Right. All of that. And, uh, and all that does is run people away from church, is all I'm saying. Huh? Because then you say, oh, I can't even have, 
Because again, because then you come to the question, what, when you can't have fun? <laughs> and that, that's it right there. Exactly. And then, you know, you get into, I'm going to say, not that, like you say, they try to discourage a lot of folks from, quote unquote, like you say, having fun. But then again, you get into different styles of churches, you know. Can't, you know, the women can't wear makeup. Dress has got to be down to the ankle, you know, all that kind of stuff. You know, and y'all know what, what churches and stuff I'm talking about. <laughs> right. But then again, you know, and, and they they use that to try to back down what we say, single to separate themselves away from everybody. Yeah, yeah. And um, it's kind of funny when it, the, the more they tend to do that stuff, those are the ones that I notice when they... Yeah, I'll say when they have a moment of weakness or when they sneak off and do what they gonna do, that's really what I wanna say. Exactly. Uh, they all sit there, pretend like they ain't doing nothing, but but them the biggest parties and everything because they putting on that fake front anyway. Exactly, exactly. And it's so easy to, to, to fake it, right? Mm -hmm. And that's why I think that, I, knew, I remember that term that said, what you doing in the back in the booth in the corner in the dark? As long as you're yes, doing sir. it in the dark, nobody sees it it's okay but what i what, mm -hmm. really, what i really hate about it is when people sit there and try to judge other people uh for their 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 lifestyle you know what mm -hmm. i'm saying is that the and that's why we're talking about the philippians 310 jim is saying is if we the main four focus you try to do is try to get people to know him and and let him kind of modify everybody's behavior on a one-on-one. -on -one. Instead of us trying to come up with rules and traditions, then it's not going to make a difference. And that that's why I came under the title. This title is coming. I'm going to show, show the script in a minute. I just killed these backup ones. The bottom line is uh, Philippians 1.6, being confident in the very thing, that he which begun the good work in you. And that's the Holy Spirit, Jimmy, unless you think different. When they say he... Who has begun a good work in you will perform until the day of Jesus Christ. There's Jesus Christ right there. So the, the person is doing the work in you, the person is doing to help you transform is the Holy Spirit. Do you, do you see anything different from that? I agree with that. Yes, yeah, the Holy Spirit is doing the work. And then I like he Hebrews uh, 12 too. It says, looking unto Jesus, not people, not rules. But Jesus to be the author and finisher of our faith. So, so what, when we bring people into the gospel, we don't need to put up all these rules. We just need to make sure they get to know the author. Who's the one that's doing the work? And then the other thing I want to put out there too is that a lot of cases because we do this quote unquote fun, some people, and then we have all these little rules, some people don't fellowship with the saints because they're too busy condemning themselves having fun. True. That the world well, tells them, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And I and, you know, I, and I just wanted to try to encourage, and that's why I, I want to bring the subject today, and that's why I want to bring this video, and I'll put it out there, is come as you are instead of trying to, to try to come up with rules that, that, that you know you can't make it anyway, if you go by rules, if you try to get salvation to the flesh, you're not going to get it. You have to get it by the Spirit. And everybody needs to encourage one another by the Spirit and let it people grow. I mean, we can't. nobody's endorsing sin. At least I'm not trying to endorse sin. But I'm not endorsing, I'm not endorsing disqualifying people from being saved. Yeah, I don't think that's the rule. I don't think that's the role that any church or anything else supposed to do. I know they're supposed to judge a tree or confront people if they're doing certain things, right? But I I don't think they should cut people off because of what they're doing in life, is what I'm trying to say. And one of the ones I wanted to show you, I'm coming from uh, Ephesians first. Uh, Ephesians 2, uh, Chris, that's, uh, starting, that's, that's uh, chapter 2, verse 11. It, it's, mm -hmm. it's the one, that, this is one of my favorite scriptures. 
And if Bishop was here, I think because Bishop was all into Ephesians. <laughs> but this one, this one right here is, is to let people know about the importance of coming into the gospel and, and, and understanding that we the whole purpose of Jesus is to put God back into our life. All right. So I put that in here, and, and Jim, and you can comment if you want to, and Chris, if you want to break into it. But I'm saying this in verse 11, it said, Wherefore remember that you being in time past Gentiles in the flesh. Now, I think we all can remember being in the flesh. I do. See, I kind of wait. I act like a fool in college anyway, so uh, <laughs> I didn't even get baptized until I was 24. So I, I come from a different perspective anyway. But it said, Be a Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time you were without the anointing, which is Christ, being alien from the commonwealth of Israel and, the, and stranger from the covenant of promise, having disappeared, I'll say having no hope, and without God in the world. And, and the reason I want to come back to not being, for don't disqualify one another, the whole purpose of us as ministries, the whole purpose of us as believers, is to introduce God into the life of those who don't know Him. And let them know that you have hope when you have God. If you don't have Christ, if you don't have God, <laughs> what hope do you have? Your own ability? Your, uh -huh. And then that, that's what I'm saying is that most people need to understand having hope, with, which is faith. Faith is the substance of things hopeful. Oh, oh Jimmy, last last week, Jimmy, I told people, I asked a question about, uh, Chris, were you there last week when I asked about, no, you weren't there. Uh, well, I didn't know. I didn't make it last week. And, hey, check this out. I'm going to ask you this question, and any one of y'all can, can, can chime in on it, but uh, do do you believe I'm holding this phone right here? Do I believe you're holding it? Yeah. Do you believe I'm holding this phone? I do. You do? All right, Chris, you believe it? Chris, Chris already tried to analyze that question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I'm going to be okay. I'm, I'm, I'm listening. Go ahead. I'm with you. Hey, Jimmy. Hey, Jimmy, I was telling, I was choosing as a teaching moment for the people on my uh, job and people I talk to. Say, I don't, I don't believe I'm holding the phone in my hands. You know you are. Exactly. Faith is the subject of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I won't have faith that I'm holding the phone because I know I'm having the, holding the phone. You know what I mean? Did you uh -huh. see that? Exactly. Uh -huh. I could, right, cause when it said faith is the subject of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen is basically talking about my senses, if I can, if I can, I can check it out with my senses, <clears throat> then it's not based mm -hmm. on faith. Faith is something where you don't see it. You hope for it. You don't hope for something that you have. You hope for something that you don't have. And and mm -hmm. and, and that's what I'm talking about. Even with the gospel, having God in the world is having faith. Having God is that if I'm dealing with my challenges, right? If I'm dealing with healing. If I'm dealing mm -hmm. with, with any other aspect of my life, if I don't have it yet, I'm going to have to, I'm, and I want it, it's going to be by faith, and then faith in who? Not in me, but in Him. Mm -hmm. right. And that's, that's what people understand is that even salvation going to heaven, is, 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 that's, a, that's, that's, not, that's not tangible that I can tell you that heaven exists. There's not right, right. there's nothing tangible I can tell you the hell exists. But my faith and expectation is by coming into Christ, I have this promise. That's what I think you're talking about, promise of salvation through Jesus Christ. I have faith that I'm going to heaven through him. And I'm trying to say is that, and this is what I was really using that for a talking moment is. I don't have faith in me following rules that people come up with to get me what I want in life to include eternal life. That's what I'm trying to say. Adding to the scriptures? 
Huh? They'd be adding to the script. Exactly. Would be if you're trying to if you're trying to make rules, right? Because the scripture said all has already when Romans has said it has already said that we have come short of the glory of all of sin and come short of the glory of God. So when we sit there and put the the guilt trip on people, when we sit there and try to put the rules on people, we we're adding to the scripture. Because the scripture says you're not going to get there. Our righteousness is in what, 50 rags? Mm -hmm. So when you're sitting there and you're putting somebody down because, oh, they went to the club last night. Oh, because you saw them talking to that woman the other day. Or you sit there and saw them cursing out a storm. And you're saying that because they did this, they can't be that. That means everything they're doing is based not on the fact is that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus... And believe in your heart that God is raised from the dead, that thou shalt be saved. Then, then, then we're focusing on, on our actions, our behavior, to determine salvation. Uh -huh. And that's not what he's trying to. And that's why I want. Because I'm just saying is, as you talking to people, if you're sitting there and you, if you, you at, at a club, or whatever, and they, they, and they enjoying themselves, you don't sit there and say, "Look, brother, ain't nobody condemning you for doing that." And I'm not trying to tell you. I'm not even telling you that you. You know, if that's if that's where you are and that's what you find fun, and God, that's not you. You're not doing it. It's not going to keep you from going to heaven. Does that make sense? And and that that's what I'm trying to make sure people understand. It's not about what you do to determine salvation. It's who you receive to determine salvation. And then everybody got to grow at their own pace, is all I'm trying to say. You know? So, do you think that there's anyone that actually keeps the law? I don't know. I don't, I, no, I don't. The Bible said that nobody has kept all the law because you remember that one scripture said if you sin at one point, <laughs> you sin in everything. Yes, sir. That's that's the problem with that. The law, the law said, the way to sin is death. That that's a, that, that's what the scripture said. The way to sin is death. And do you believe anybody can keep all those laws? Like for example, Jesus said there, say if you look at a woman and and and, and lust after her, you commit adultery with already in your heart. So how many people, to include me, <laughs> and Chris, we talked about it a couple of weeks ago, to include yes, me, sir. who or, or, and, look, and don't forget the woman. They look at it. They look at this something about a man that's attractive. I don't know what it is, but they do. <laughs> are they? That are would they? be me. That would be me. That would be me. They found. We found. They got a reason, right? <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> but the question is, I don't see anything that keeping people from sinning in the spirit, as far as the laws are concerned. There's a lot of violations in the spirit. Or in their heart, more than they do it in their flesh. And he said, "You sin already. If you uh, if yeah. you if you covet, how many people covet something that belong to somebody else? Yeah, all, all the time. Right, all the time. And so, some a lot of people don't want to sit to understand that the the, the sin violation of the law is not just at the physical level. It's that Jimmy, you agree with that it's at the spiritual level too. And that's what get Sir. that's what getting people, and they're gonna sit there and say, "Lord, I didn't do that. <laughs> I didn't do that." He said, "Boy, I was looking at your heart. I don't know about. <laughs> I, I I ain't saying you did it physically, but I know what you wanted to do. Yeah. And I know what I know was right here. And how many how many people? Hey, Jim, how many people have killed somebody in the in their in their mind? Well, that's it. It's even in the imagination. It's exactly. even in the thinking. Exactly. And, 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 uh, and I mean, I know a lot of people can control that to a certain extent. But I mean, even then, you're not perfect at it because there's sometimes certain ways, certain situations, certain people, certain looks that's going to take your mind places that, that, that you may not go physically, but your mind still you with it. with that. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. There's a lot of us have hate. We sit there trying to talk about not hating. Uh, you know, we talk about racism or or, or, or what the Ku Klux Klan or somebody else does. But but Chris, I, you agree? There's there's some hate in the mind. 
Let me tell you something. <laughs> and, and, and my daughter just made a good point, especially with social media, because I mean, they it's it's, it's designed to take you through uh, a plethora of emotions and take you down different avenues. I mean, that's what it's designed to do. And I mean, you know, just like this right here. Somebody said, no, 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 no. But they, they hate Donald Trump. There you go, you're already at the gate. You're hating someone. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, 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 what does that fit in? I mean, do you, it, it, you, do we excuse the things that we do, and we implicate others on the things that they do? Is right. that how we do it? Exactly. Jealousy. That's another one. <laughs> you know. Oh, absolutely. Come on, bro. So, so when you ask that question, do we do believe everybody keep the law? I, 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 I when I did want to qualify, Jimmy, I don't think there's nobody to keep all the law. And the scriptures exactly. and the scriptures say if you sin at one point, you sin across you sin all the way across. And the Bible teaches that the law is not of faith anyway. anyway. It's not of faith. Exactly. Because again, just like you said, that's something tangible that I can actually see, taste, smell, touch, or do. Right. And so and so that does not require faith. You know what I'm saying? Right. It doesn't require that to do that. I mean, a an atheist could not do nothing every Sabbath and lay around the house. Does that mean now this atheist is keeping the law? See? Yeah. You care less about the law. Exactly. That that's why he's saying is it is. Nobody can keep the uh, law. Uh and that's why he's saying is the only way was John fourteen six. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but Chris by him. Not mm -hmm. by people. Not by people who sit there and can take communion in the church while other people got to walk out of the church. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I know, you know, there's, there's one thing, you know, like the father's the baptism. The baptism, he said, because somebody asked a question the other day, well, if you don't get baptized, are you saved? What did the scripture say? Come on. That, that's the question. What did the scripture say? He will lack that's you to get baptized. But the fact is that that's like that man on the cross. That was not an issue. And oh look, matter of fact, Chris, I'm looking at this. Well, what if I get somebody on their dying bed that that mm -hmm. decide to receive Jesus Christ? Well, and, and I mean they they they're ready for hospice. Hey, there you go. How you doing, Chris? You can see the you see it. <laughs> oh, I see you. I see you. Okay. Yeah, but you know she mad at me now. Why? <laughs> For, for showing her this early, she ain't done her hair or makeup. You know how they are. And no, and hey, look, but <laughs> no, but no, 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 her though, she gonna say, I know I look good whether I move my hair or not. That is absolutely <laughs> right. That is absolutely right. There's some people, well, hey, hey Chris, there's some people that they, they, they say <laughs> she's not Instagram ready yet. I know that's right. <laughs> <laughs> now there's some people <laughs> that may not want to uh, show up. Unprepared, but there's some people they can wake up naturally and squared away. That's all oh, I yeah. can say. <laughs> For sure. But but that's but Chris, that's the main thing I'm saying is that's why I want to say said knowing him means letting no one disqualify you. We need to be able to let people know in the gospel there is no disqualification based on the uh, objections or observation of man. Yes. It's, it, and therefore, they need to understand, stay in Christ. Don't walk away from Christ. Because that's the other thing. Uh, some people, they just don't come to church because they're not meeting all the expectations. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Oh, they don't They don't check all the boxes yet. I mean, I don't act like Brother Reverend Deacon Doug yet. You know, I, I still got to get my, like you said, I got to get my hook in the corner. Right. So I can't sit there and, and, uh, and be like them. Right. And so a lot of young people, that's why you run a lot of young people away because they're sitting there saying, y'all too, too judgmental. Mm 